Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Living Focus this week. And so glad that you could join me again this Tuesday morning as we're talking a little bit about uh, reaching skeptics, talking to those who uh, are skeptical of the Christian faith, and, and maybe some things we need to keep in mind as we think about talking to them. Now, before we delve into this, let me encourage you, please, Take a minute, if you would, and subscribe to this channel on YouTube. It helps our algorithms and uh, helps to get the video out beyond what we ever thought was possible. And also, if you'd like to like the video, would appreciate that as well. And please don't hesitate to leave any comments or questions or thoughts that you might have. Well, let's talk a little bit today about how to effectively communicate with people who might be a little bit skeptical of the Christian faith, all right? I mean, let's face it, we all have friends. We have family members, we have colleagues who may have doubts and who might question our faith in Christ. The question is, how do we engage them? And, and not just how do we talk to them, but how do we engage them in meaningful and respectful conversation? So if we can, let's explore a few things here if we can. Keep them in mind as we prepare our hearts to have conversations with those who might be skeptics of the Christian faith. First of all, let's remember this. Let's remember that we need to be empathetic and we need to practice active listening. You know, when talking to skeptics about Christianity, it's crucial, I mean absolutely crucial, that we approach them with empathy and we approach them with an open heart. Now, now understand, their skepticism could come from all kinds of places. One place it could come from uh, frankly, is from, you know, bad experiences in their past, bad experiences in their upbringing. Uh, it could be from different philosophical beliefs, all right? So we need to understand where it comes from. And you know what else? We need to be genuinely interested in their perspective. We need to be genuinely interested in their thoughts. We need to active, actively listen to what they have to say. So in doing so, let me encourage you to not interrupt. Don't, I mean, do your best to avoid interrupting or do your best to avoid providing answers for them. So, so try to put some restraints on there and instead try to create an environment where they feel comfortable in sharing with you their thoughts. Everybody likes to be heard. So let's make sure we create an atmosphere where they can be heard. And we, and we talked about being an active listener. Well, Active listening is a communication skill that involves being fully engaged with the speaker so that you can comprehend what that speaker is actually saying. You see, active listening goes beyond just simply hearing the words. It really does. It's about making a deliberate attempt to understand what it is that they are saying um, understand their message, understand their emotions and their thoughts, to understand their intentions behind the words. Okay, so, so what are some characteristics of being an active listener? I'd like to share a few with you. Okay, one characteristic is this, giving full attention to what they have to say. Focus uh, on what they are saying in, in their entirety. Focus on the speaker here. Put away distractions. Put away things like cell phones, okay? or other tasks that come up and pop up in front of you. Show that person that you really value what they are saying. Another thing is to maintain eye contact with them. Uh, that demonstrates to them that you're interested in what they're having to say. You know, you care about what the conversation is about. It helps to convey to them that you are present, that you are attentive, that you are listening, that you care. Number three, Try to avoid being judgmental, all right? Active listeners withhold judgment and they avoid making assumptions while that speaker is sharing, all right? They recognize that everybody has a perspective, everybody has, you know, experiences. So try to withhold judgment. Another thing you can do is use, you know, verbal clues like, you know, nodding or, uh-huh, I understand. Do what you can to let them know that you are engaged in the words that are rolling off their tongue. Another thing, ask clarifying questions. That's what active listeners do. They seek clarification. 
They want to understand better whenever something seems unclear. You know, they want to dive deeper into specific points. And whenever you ask clarifying questions, it helps someone know that you really care, you want to know, you really want to understand what's on their heart. All right? Uh, avoid interruptions. We've already said that already. You know, refrain from interrupting the speaker. You know, uh, let them finish their thoughts before you respond. Sometimes we've already got our response and we just can't wait for them to be quiet so we can jump in. And so because we can't wait, we just jump in. So avoid that. Take time to paraphrase things. Summarize what that person has just said to you, you know, in your own words. It kind of helps them understand that you are processing what they're saying because you want to understand. And so when you paraphrase it and put it back in your own words, it shows them that you are actively engaged. All right. Be patient. Some speakers sometimes need to take their time to express themselves fully. And active listening is... Uh, is it is a discipline of patience all right give that speaker the space they need to share the thoughts and the feelings that they have all right resist the urge to offer solutions immediate solutions what i mean by that is that sometimes speakers just need someone to listen all right not to solve their problem just listen active listeners understand this you know and they don't rush to provide solutions and then finally Show them that you, you know, you are open-minded. Active listeners approach conversations with an open mind. They're willing to consider the viewpoints and the perspectives that are being offered. All right? So active listening is a, is a practice of genuine respect. That's what it is. It, it shows genuine interest in what that person has to say to you. And you know what it does? It enhances communication. It builds trust. And when you're talking to someone who's a, a skeptic, trust matters so much. Active listening deepens the connection that you have with them. And it really does build a healthier relationship. So listen, if you want to show them that they matter, then listen actively and avoid the things that uh, prevent you from doing so. All right. Number two, choose a respectful tone and demeanor when you're talking to them. You know, when you're talking to someone who's skeptical and they're challenging what you believe, sometimes it's very easy to get defensive. It's very easy to get emotional, you know, especially when we're discussing matters of faith that are very, very personal to us. However, remaining respectful and, and, and continuing to have a calm demeanor, that is absolutely essential. What you and I have got to remember, our goal, our goal is not to win an argument. Our goal is to represent the love of Jesus well. You know, that is what our, um, that's what our goal is, to represent Christ's love and truth very well. So, so we need to avoid certain things. We need to avoid controvert, uh, confrontational language. Um, we need to avoid attitudes that might alienate them and keep them from really having communication with us. You know, we need to speak with kindness. We need to speak with patience. We need to speak with humility. Okay, so make sure that you choose a respectful tone and demeanor whenever you're speaking to people. And, and number three, honor Christ through your actions. I, I cannot underscore this enough. Honoring Christ through our actions. And the best way to represent and honor Christ while we're talking to someone who's skeptical is by living out your faith daily. Your actions, as you live them out, should align with your beliefs. They just should. And, and what that does is it shows the person you're talking to the, the transformational power of Christianity, the, the transformational power of the gospel. So be a loving and supportive friend. And in doing so, by the way you live, Display the fruits of the Spirit, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Let your life be a living testimony of Christ's work. Now, if all this is going to happen, then the truth of the matter is you and I have got to prepare our hearts and we've got to prepare our minds for these conversations. So it's essential that we approach them with humility. We approach them with a deeper understanding even of our own faith. So here are some things to keep in mind 
as you are preparing your heart and mind for these conversations. Number one, study and pray. Continually deepen your understanding of Christianity through Bible study and prayer. And this will equip you with the knowledge uh, that you need and the spiritual strength that you're going to need to rely on as you have these conversations. So study and pray. Number two, know your audience. Uh, before the conversation, try to understand their perspective a little better. This is going to help you tailor your approach and, and um, frankly, to address specific doubts and questions that they might have in mind. So take the time to know them. If you know something about their background, try to learn more about that. If you know something about their philosophies or, or even religious background, try to understand that a little better. It goes a long way as you're communicating with them. And honestly, it shows respect for them, that you're just not throwing thoughts out there randomly. But no, you've actually prayed for them. You've learned a little bit more about their background, and you want to connect with them in the most effective way possible. Number three, practice patience. Recognize that these conversations may not lead to immediate conversions. They may not, but be patient and trust God's guidance. Seek guidance from the Lord. You know, don't, don't hesitate to consult with, with others that you might need to, a, a pastor, a mentor, a, a fellow believer. Seek advice and support from other people. They can offer insights and encouragement like you wouldn't believe. And then finally, pray for discernment. Ask God for wisdom and discernment in these conversations and trust in his guidance as he leads you. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the middle of a conversation with someone who didn't believe like I did. I've been praying about it. And all of a sudden, in the middle of that conversation, it's like the Lord provides just what I needed uh, at the time I needed it to help them proceed down uh, the path of the journey that they're on, taking the next step towards towards God. It's amazing how God uh, does that. So pray for discernment along the way. Listen, I get it. Talking with skeptics can sometimes be challenging, but it's also an opportunity, an opportunity to demonstrate the love of Jesus and to share the gospel. And we need to remember that. We're going to talk more about this in the coming weeks, but I want to thank you for joining me today uh, you know, on, on Living Focus because I really think that this is a good place for us to start the conversation. So take time, share this video with others. Don't forget, subscribe to the, the YouTube channel. I would certainly appreciate that. And, uh, and feel free to leave any remarks, comments, or ask any questions that you have. Thank you so much for joining me today. I also want to encourage you to go to my blog, livingfocus.life, and there I have uh, daily devotions that go out. And if you'd like to sign up for the daily devotion, you can do so right there on the homepage. And I hope you'll do that. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And I'll see you next Tuesday right back here on Living Focus. God bless you.